So here I got the three day chart, five minute candles for GEVO, GEVO. As we can see, it made a huge price movement from under 60 cents to over two. It gapped down overnight the next day to the 130 range, closed at 120 and after hours on Friday, right? So I wanna go over a quick overview of the fundamentals as well as a quick analysis on the technicals. So let's start off looking at the catalyst that caused this. So they got a contract over here with this company that puts their contracts over $1.5 billion in long term, which is a huge amount and pretty much you never will see a, that much contracts on these penny stocks. So this caused a lot of volume as we can see. Let's look at the daily. So the day of this news, it pushed $980 million in volume that day traded. The next day, 240. So about a fourth of the amount the next day, but still a lot at 240 million. So let's go back to the five minute and this think. So we got the three day. So what they did was in typical penny stock fashion, they actually dropped the offering at midnight. So everyone that swung was screwed. No one had a chance to get out. It was a rush to sell at pre-market open. But they did 38 million. 38.4 million shares at one dollar and thirty cents for fifty million dollars so that's what I was excited when I saw that and I had luckily not swung it that day to buy the panic and play the uh, scalp it pretty much and I was looking to get under 130 but it was a weird day as we can see it actually stayed over 130 all day until it crashed and the day on what I believe to be a short attack so um they dropped this this offering at 130 but what's also handy is they just dropped their 10 kill so we could add all this up so they're going to do 38.4 million shares of uh dilution here in this offering and their 10 kill just has 53.8 right so what's that 54.2 54.2, let me think. 54. So that's 92.4 million shares after this offering, of, right? So even at $1.30, this is a this is a under $150 million market cap with revenue with contracts of 1.5 billion. It's going to cause a lot of speculation and hype. So this is an interesting play in my in my opinion, but at the same time it's worth noting. So now we know they got $50 million in cash from that offering, as well as this 6.3, they already have a million in cash. So is that 56.3 million in cash, these contracts, and a sub 100 million share count with the offering fully diluted. So. It's interesting. It's also we're noting it was a direct offering, so it's not going to the public. So it won't initially affect the float. But it's also worth on the other side, knowing look at the revenue, how much it dropped, and if you could guys go, go online, the CEO just did an interview. He explains that he pretty much they shut down a, a facility that did the oil because it was unprofitable, and they didn't see any reason to reopen it. So that's what affect the revenue. So. That, so they're trying to uh, cut down on the net loss because it was unprofitable. So it was a strategic move. But look, they got no revenue. So it's it's one of those ones when people realize these revenues, are, these contracts aren't going to be coming in right away and tomorrow people will run. A lot of people aren't going to hold this for years. The crowd, majority of the crowd just looking for quick money. So that's what causes a sell-off. No matter what they say or they think, is if the minute they start selling, the price is going to drop. So... It's so worth noting that on these plays. I think we just saw a good example on SINT when they did the 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 conference call and they said the mask's is going to take, what, six months? So everyone rushes to that bid because I don't know what people think. They're going to start selling masks tomorrow. Same here. It's going to take a while. So this almost is a weird one. It's like people, what, is this an investment as a penny stock, which is I never suggest, but maybe this is one of the rare ones that can. I saw some uh, people talking about buying a lot of shares, some big money that usually you don't see in these small caps. So it's interesting. 
So also one worth noting, this company has a bad history. So it's going to attract shorts. So check this out. This was on June 30th. All right. Shout out Givo for dropping one of the coldest blooded offerings I've ever seen. The price was at 80 cents. And right after the bell on after hours, they dropped an uh, offering at 61 cents. Think about that. So they're just, they killed everyone there. So I couldn't believe that. I mean, man, that's what they've been doing for years. So I told you guys, let it bleed a couple days and look for the bounce. So it was 40, it went down to 49 cents and then bam, look, it hit 68 cents in a couple days. A lot of my uh, people following my alerts made a lot of money on that one. So I'm just trying to point out, look, they, this, this is a, a dilutive, toxic company. It has a bad history, but it has an interesting product. And here I am in uh, February in 2019. I haven't. This is not a new ticker to me. I've been following this for years. This ticker is always heavily shorted, so it's so a huge squeeze is potentially here. And that's what the same thing we saw on Monday. Shorts will religiously short every one of these pops because it drops. And uh, with that volume, they got squeezed to two plus that day. So the question is. I want to show you this too. Here's Tim Sykes. We all know he shorts these penny stock runs. And when you see people talking about, here we go, to those that were ripping on the panic sales on Givo early day at 150, 160, bragging at how they added the longs, it should be back to the twos. Use this lesson to humble yourself. Now it's 119. So as we look at the chart, where is it at 119? So this is what shorts do, just like bulls. They wait for it to drop the very lowest of the day, and then they start going on social media and, and, and go, like, bragging or something that they called it, right? So that tells me, is he is he looking, did he short that probably, and now here he is feeling himself posting on social media at 119. But then here we go, he's talking about it's going to be under a dollar. It'll be under a dollar next week. So maybe the shorts are going to continuously try to take this back down to where it came from. As we can see, there's a, a gap, a big gap to play. So that's that's a scary aspect if it starts heading down as a bull. But another thing I want to say, the big squeeze, the best squeezes that we see are from these stocks where people get these opinions, these strong opinions where they just short every pop. And they think, oh, it can't change. And when change does come, the shorts aren't ready. And that's when they get caught with their pants down. And that's when we see the BPTH squeezes and the, and you know, like the G, J, was it G, Genus Brands or JNUS? That's a shitty company. Imagine everyone was shorting that and it ran to eight because no one thought it could run that high, right? And the shorts just kept getting it. So, so that's kind of like my, my psychology on this play and how I'm thinking about it. But let's look at, I got all the, the supports and resistance levels that formed from this week's action last week's action so for my support level my price targets I'm thinking is 135 to about 140 is gonna be heavy as shit from all the price action on Friday after that I'll be looking for the 150 after that I look for this 160 then I'd be looking for 175 then 185 then two and then um 215 to 220 is going to be heavy from the this double top. So that's all with the uh, re levels of resistance and price targets I'll be looking for that we can see on this chart specifically. As of support, this 120, 115 is very crucial to me to hold. If it breaks that, I'm going to get scared and I'll wait probably for the $1 test. $1 breaks, 85 well, 90 first, I'd say, from right here. I'll see if 90 holds. Underneath that, I'll be looking for 85, which we see over here. Let's go to the um, one-year daily chart. So 85's here. You can see off of this. Underneath that, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be 65. I don't think it's going to go all the way down there. But if short, there's that gap. If shorts attack it, but I'm thinking more likely the one will hold. If that breaks, I think 90 would hold. And I'll be scalping off all these things at all these points. But say this 115, 120 holds and all those other price targets get hit, the next ones I see on this chart are going to be right here. At 215, 220 we went over. 
there's gonna be one around 240 right here 250 265 285 $3 $325 and then the, around 350 where it peaked out at and we're noting look out the volume compared to all, all the other days so it's gonna be really see how much volume continues on the next week and I'll be probably that mo most realistic looking for that reclaim of the 130 one four that 125 130 I mean I mean one what is it 135 140 level first and if they can break that, I'll be looking for that 150, 160. I don't know how. I don't think it's gonna get much over that, to be honest. I think it's gonna be so many people that are uh, that chase that first day of that news. They're gonna be looking to get out. So I wanna fall in love here and realize what kind of stock you're in and the history it has. And the shorts are gonna be all over it. And about the gap down on the way down. But at the same time, with all this volume, this is a great scout play. And I could easily see it reclaiming that one, that 135, 140, and even possibly breaking 150 and 160. And you know, from one, from about a one, from the 120s. I mean, geez, that's a 20, 30 percent. So that's what I'm looking for next week.